Hello, and welcome to Filled with His Love. You know, Paul gives some pretty strong counsel to those in Corinth. In the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, he says, quote, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputed of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? End quote. This verse seems to denigrate any knowledge that comes from men and women, especially those who think they are wise in the ways of the world. But what about the counsel of the Lord revealed in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 88? Quote, And as all have not faith, seek ye diligently, and teach one another words of wisdom. Yea, seek ye out of the best books words of wisdom. Seek learning even by study and also by faith. Very famous verse. On the surface, these two verses of Scripture seem to conflict with each other. Paul seems to say, be wary of the wisdom of the world. Maybe you don't want to read too many other books other than the Scriptures. And then in the DNC, we're counseled to seek wisdom out of the best books. So, how do we reconcile these two verses? Let's remember that the people in Corinth were still quite idolatrous. They were not worshiping God, but had been captured by the worldly knowledge that surrounded them. So, they were not seeking truth. Paul was trying to show them that they needed to give up idols of the past and focus on the Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's compare that to our day. There are some in our own culture who, in one sense, worship the things of the world. They get caught up in worldly knowledge, even racism and conspiracy theories. They shift their focus from God to false and misleading movements. It is truth, after all that we seek. And seeking truth is a full-time job. We can never let up. We need to be constantly searching after truth. And because Jesus said that he is the truth and the life, we will always grow closer to him if we are earnestly seeking truth. Here's what President Nelson has said about the importance of seeking truth. Quote, Dear brothers and sisters, God is the source of all truth. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints embraces all truth that God conveys to his children, whether learned in a scientific laboratory or received by direct revelation from him. Hmm. Received in a scientific laboratory. So he's opening this gate of knowledge very widely and saying we seek after all all truth, wherever it comes from. President Nelson himself learned a lot in scientific laboratories. He did early experiments with animals that eventually led to the heart bypass surgery performed on humans so often today. In fact, performed by President Nelson on both of my parents. So I benefited directly from his seeking truth in the laboratory. The scriptures themselves taught him little about how to perform heart bypass surgery. He had to seek that secular truth in the laboratory. But seeking that truth led him closer to God, not further away. The problem comes when we look at secular learning as the end all, when we begin to worship worldly wisdom and set God aside. That's what Paul was warning the people in Corinth about. I've always been interested in why some people denigrate those who might be called learned. We see this divide in our culture today. There are some well-educated people who look down on those who have not obtained a college degree and those with no college degree who disrespect those who have a degree. It all seems so strange to me, but it's real. The causes are multiple. I don't want to get into those things too deeply right now, but only to say that we've been warned about it in the scriptures. The Book of Mormon teaches clearly that being separated into classes because of learning is evil and that we must avoid it. However, education has always been central to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Kirtland, the School of the Prophets was established. When the saints reached Nauvoo, the prophet Joseph commissioned William Clayton to create curriculum for an elementary school. And they also established the University of Nauvoo. Education has been part and parcel of the church since it was restored. Then, when the saints reached the Salt Lake Valley, they established the University of Deseret, which was later named the University of Utah. BYU, of course, was also established by the church, as were all the other colleges in the state. 
And now the church sponsors four institutions of higher education, BYU, BYU-Idaho, BYU-Hawaii, and Ensign College. Lots of, quote, wisdom of the world, quote, being taught in each of these institutions. But faculty who teach in these schools are counseled to bathe their teaching in the light of the restored gospel, as President Kimball once taught. Whether they are preparing engineers, nurses, scientists, artists, or educators. Think for a moment about the Come Follow Me curriculum. It is focused exclusively on the study of the scriptures. But consider how much secular knowledge was necessary to produce the curriculum. When I read the introductory paragraphs each week at the beginning of each section, I am extremely impressed with the quality of the writing. These are beautifully crafted paragraphs, thoughtful and thought-provoking. Those who wrote these paragraphs spent a lot of time learning how to write well, and they used their skill to enlighten us about sacred text. Now consider the illustrations in the curriculum. Each week we see paintings selected specifically for the passages of Scripture we will be studying. Sometimes these are familiar paintings, and sometimes they are ones I have never seen before. They are always uplifting and beautiful and aid me in my learning. The art is inspiring all by itself. Someone had to learn how to create that artwork, and someone else had to select the art that would be appropriate for each section. And what about the videos we see in each week? Actors, script writers, videographers, they all had to combine their talents to produce these videos. Instructional designers and graphic artists use their talents to produce curriculum that would enhance the learning of every learner, young and old. They have always the ideas for those with younger children. Well, someone had to come up with those. And their training helped them devise wonderful learning activities for different ages. So those with expertise in technology had to create the programming that allows us to click and pull up verses of Scripture on the same page by clicking a little link embedded in the curriculum. This required programmers and those who had studied computer science. And for me, these aids technologically are amazingly helpful. When we see a passage of Scripture cited in the curriculum, we click on it and we can read it immediately and get insights and then discuss it with those that we're studying with. I could go on and on, but what I'm trying to convey is that learning is key to all we do. Life itself is all about learning. We learn our way through every day. Something breaks, and we need to learn how to fix it. A person is struggling with a problem we've never encountered, and we need to learn how to help that person. My parents did not obtain college degrees, but they were learners nonetheless. My dad was a consummate gardener. He learned all he could about how to grow things, especially straw flowers during his retirement years. With hands that shook from Parkinson's disease, he grew hundreds of straw flowers every year, often planting new varieties each spring. He hung those flowers on the ceiling of the garage to dry them and then threaded tiny green wires into the dried blooms to preserve them. Then he arranged them in vases and sold them to doctors who gave the bouquets to their patients. He had to learn about all kinds of things to be able to do that, and I could never understand how he could thread those green wires into the dried straw flower blooms while he had Parkinson's disease. But he learned how to do that, too. My mother never stopped learning about music and dramatic readings. She took voice lessons from the director of the Tabernacle Choir. She also took dramatic reading lessons from a leading drama teacher with that expertise in the Salt Lake Valley. Neither of my parents ever stopped learning. My parents' example has influenced me so much. Like them, I never want to stop learning. Like President Nelson, I want to learn in the laboratory, quote, as well as in the scriptures every day. And in the laboratory, meaning not just science knowledge, but in all kinds of knowledge. I want to understand the world around me, but I don't want to let the seeking of knowledge ever lead me away from God. Rather, I want to let all truth-seeking lead me closer to God. That's why learning is such an important topic for this podcast filled with His love. We learn our way closer to God, 
and we learn our way closer to his children. In fact, one might conclude that what we might call relational learning is the most important learning of all. How can we draw closer to God unless we learn about God and come to know Him? And how can we draw closer to each other unless we learn about each other? How we think, how we feel, why we say and do what we say and do, this is relational learning, and it's all about the quality of our attachment to God and to each other. We need knowledge, but we also need inspiration to improve a relationship. There are lots of sayings about the relationship between inspiration and information. We all remember Edison's quote, Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. This thought says to me that if we want to receive inspiration and revelation, we need to learn all we can about the question we're pursuing. Learning takes effort, and effort yields perspiration. I don't want to be afraid of expending the effort required to learn what I need to learn. I know from experience that when I expend that effort, the Lord will provide me with the inspiration, even a little at a time, so that I can arrive at the destination I seek. And that means that I need to seek what the Lord would have me learn. Learning is a sacred act. When we're seeking new understanding, we are drawing closer to God, the embodiment of all truth and all light. So now I need to decide what the Lord would have me learn today and then go about learning it. I hope you will do the same, and we look forward to seeing you next time.